So you wrote the book focusing a lot on personal stories, like the Cambys, Clarks. Why did you decide to write it from such a personal kind of vantage point and bring personal individuals so close to the reader? So when I conceived of the book, I already knew that it was going to be a really complicated mm -hmm. story, and I really wanted to tell the fullest possible history. So. I want, and I also wanted the reader to be kind of on the ground with individuals um, so that you would follow them kind of on their way in and out of this theater, you would follow them through all the conflicts, and then when they exit or die or whatever happens to them. And I ended up with nine people, uh, which seems like a lot, it seems like a lot, but in order to tell the full story of the war, I needed all of those nine people. And, and everyone seemed to be like always there as right. well, right? They move in and out, some people exit, you know, kind of halfway through the book, some people a little further, and then um, the, the two people who remain from the beginning to the end are John Clark, the Surveyor General of New Mexico Territory, and Juanita, a Navajo woman who's there and, and continues to, right. to be there um, with her community throughout the entire war and afterwards. So um, I chose people who were both kind of representative of their communities. They were um, people who uh, were part of every single moving element in this theater on all different sides. Um, but I also chose people who I could, I could actually track them. So I needed to find people where either they had written a lot of documents, um, either diaries or letters or, or reports or you know, whatever, whatever material we had, or that they were well known enough, like Louisa Camby, right. um, where they didn't write anything necessarily about themselves and their experience, but everyone wrote about them. Right. And I could track their movements and their whereabouts, uh, usually through um, their husbands or their regiments, and I could figure out kind of where they were and what they were doing. Um, so what this does for the reader is that it allows you to get um, this really broad frame of all of the different groups that are engaged in conflict over this region. Um, but it also gives you, I think, I mean, I'm hoping it gives you a good reading experience because you actually get to know these people fairly well um, because they were real people, they were complicated. Um, you know, some of them were pretty terrible, um, uh, extremely racist and prejudiced, um, lots of ambitious, uh, men in particular, um, but then they're also, you Which know, they have... Which is sort of funny because you decided to use Richard Camby's wife instead of the general who's leading yes. the war in yes, I was, the Confederacy. Yes, so Louisa uh, Camby was married to E.R.S. Camby, mm -hmm. um, Edward Richards for Camby, and she called him Richard, which is why you, you. most military historians know him as Edward Camby. <laughs> so, but I didn't want to confuse readers by going right. back and forth between his names, so since most of the, the chapters are from his, for her viewpoint, I just referred to him as Richard. But I felt like she was an interesting figure. I had found her pretty early on, um, mm -hmm. mostly because Confederates uh, called her the Angel of Santa Fe because she had, you know, kind of run this kind of nursing hospital program after the Battle of Glorieta Pass. And so I thought she was really interesting. She was, an, you know, an army wife and had been for 20 years um, right. before the Civil War. And so she allowed me to tell a story, a kind of longer story about women in the military who traveled with their husbands, who lived in forts and, you know, engaged in various ways with the military. She had also always kind of been nursing soldiers at every place she was stationed. So I was interested in, in giving the reader that background too, sort of how the U.S. Army ends up in the West with all of these frontier forts. And so then the U.S. Army is pretty well positioned uh, during the war. Um, you know, they send very few people eastward. They still have people there. And then her husband uh, is able to then concentrate those um, those officers and um, enlisted men and combine them with volunteers and create a pretty substantial army um, to defend against the Confederates. 